my pleasure to introduce our special guests this morning. We're going to be joined by two school leaders from an elementary and a high school in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles. We have Alex Chacon, the president of Salesian High School, and Karina Moreno-Corgan, the president of Dolores Mission School. And Alex has also brought two of his high school students, Nathan and Hector, to speak to us this morning. I'd also like to welcome Nancy Portillo from the Department of Catholic Schools. Nancy, um, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, um, CF, for hosting this wonderful coffee second time. And it's going to be a wonderful one just as last week's. I wanted to take a, mo uh, take a moment and just also thank our wonderful leaders um, for being here today and students. Um, uh, to share coffee and share community and share connectivity with us. Thank you so much. I also wanted to just thank, um, I don't know if everyone knows there are some wonderful administrative professionals here with us. As I scroll through the screen, today is Administrative Professionals Day. We couldn't do all the work that we do without our administrative professionals. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Big shout out and big hugs and big virtual hugs. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to say good morning and, and share a little bit about um, I'll get what the department is doing and a little bit about what I do. So um, uh, I came to Catholic schools a few years ago and I was a, a principal and a president and I came from LA Unified and from Green Dot Charter Schools. Um, my background in education is over 20 years. Um, and when I came to the Department of Catholic Schools, I was an assistant superintendent and my main job was to oversee academic excellence, which is now kind of the distance learning team right? And um, also federal and state programs. And so I work really closely with our food service program, uh, titles one through four and things like that. Um, under Superintendent Paula Scala's leadership, um, I was uh, appointed as the chief of staff. This is a new position at the Department of Catholic Schools. So I'm the chief of staff at the Department of Catholic Schools. And one of my main roles or positions is to, or is to really um, support our superintendent, all of the initiatives, uh, going on and all of our priorities at the Department of Catholic Schools. So I just wanted to share that's kind of what I do. Um, I, uh, I, I kind of try to support him and his, and his time uh, to make sure that he's focused on all of the really important um, things that he needs to be focused on to continue to support our schools in, in all things. Um, I work still closely with the distance learning team. I work very closely with uh, Deputy uh, Dr. Dan O'Connell and, and Tony Gala as well, and with everyone else in different departments. So if ever you have a question or you have some good news about schools or you know you want to get a hold of Paul, <laughs> email me, call me, whatever it is, Nancy Portillo um, at the Department of Catholic Schools. And so I'm here for you, we're all here for you, and just thank you again for doing everything. Um, Quick, really quick facts, uh, fun facts are, we're serving right now every day about 12,500 meals in our schools. Thank you, Lilia and her team. So 12,500 meals, that's up. Every week it's up. So thank you, thank you to the schools and the parishes that are open and being grab and go sites. Uh, there are 20,000 iPads out there that have been deployed to our students. Um, and we're currently in the process of having conversations to really collaborate with LA84 to provide over 7,000 pieces of athletic equipment to our uh, media students in our communities to make sure that they're out there. They're not, you know, they're getting all sorts of support um, um, uh, in the community. So those are some, some fun facts that are happening right now. And if there's anything that I can do uh, for you, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. We're really, really pleased to have you with us this morning. If you're new to the Catholic Education Foundation and CEF, what we do is we provide tuition awards to thousands of students every year, thanks to the support of our donors. We hope that this program today can provide a glimpse into our Catholic schools to help you get to know the students and families that we serve. We'll be back on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. every week with special guests from throughout the Archdiocese. And last week we heard from Paula Scala, the Senior Director and Superintendent of Catholic Schools, and Antonio Felix, the Director of Place Corps and CAST at the LMU School of Education. If you'd like to view last week's event, you can see it at cefdn.org 
uh, slash coffee with CEF, which was the same site that you used to RSVP for this event. And you can use that site to RSVP for next week's event as well. This week, we are very, very lucky to be joined by Alex Chacon and Karina Marina Corgan, who can provide some insight into the Catholic school community in Boyle Heights, which is one of the lowest income neighborhoods in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Both Alex and Karina are products of our Catholic schools. Alex attended Santa Teresita Elementary School and graduated from Bishop Mora Salesian High School. And Karina attended St. Louis of France Elementary School in La Puente and St. Lucie's Priory High School in Glendora. Alex attended Georgetown University, where he graduated with a degree in English and theology in 1998. Since his graduation from Georgetown, Alex received his master's in education from LMU and has devoted his entire working life to education as a teacher, coach, principal, and development officer. Alex was principal at St. Monica Catholic High School prior to his return to Salesian High School. In 2015, Alex was named the principal of Salesian High School, and in 2018, Alex became president. Karina graduated from Loyola Marymount University in 2001 with undergraduate degrees in psychology and Spanish. She was then accepted into the first cohort of Place Corps, where she earned a master's degree in elementary education. Her professional journey took her to Dolores Mission School, a Jesuit elementary school in Boyle Heights, where she is completing her 13th year. She began as principal in 2007 and was appointed president in 2017. Karina graduated from the Principal's Leadership Institute at UCLA and earned an administrative credential in MED in education. Fun fact, Karina and Alex were both among the top three fundraisers on the CEF racing team this year. Alex just completed the LA Marathon and Karina ran the Half Marathon Charity Challenge. And for this, we are very, very grateful. So thank you for being CEF supporters, Karina and Alex, in so many ways. I'm still sore, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you, despite your soreness, thank you for joining us this morning. And we're very excited to have you. So uh, first of all, um, the most important question, are you drinking coffee or tea this morning? And uh, what's in your cup, Karina? Neither. I'm drinking water. <laughs> I have a little Frida Kahlo cup. My caffeine is actually in the form of a Diet Coke, because I have a, a Diet Coke over here on the side. And Alex, what have you got? Instant coffee for me in my Salesian uh, mug. Classy. Yeah. Well, very classy good. mug. <laughs> <laughs> so... We've got a few questions for you, and then we, you know, we invite people, please submit your questions for Nancy, Karina, Alex. First of all, why did you choose to be an educator in Catholic schools, Alex? Um, you know, I, I just have to say I've, I've been really blessed with incredible teachers throughout my life that really shaped um, the decisions that I would make in my formative years. Uh, obviously, my parents, uh, who I'm just very blessed to have still with me today, um, just were always very good about, quite honestly, never letting me know that we were poor. You know, we always felt like we had everything, uh, even though I realize now we just, we didn't. I, you know, I review our financial aid applications here and took a peek at ours, uh, my own families, and realized my parents made $35,000 when I was at Salesian High School. Uh, but somehow they made it sort of a, a feeling for us to always have hope and always realize that there were people that were less fortunate than, than we were. And so I, I always appreciated that lens. Um, and I always wanted to get into a, a position where I would be able to help families like, like mine. Uh, but two very impactful school administrators in my life really, I think, drove me toward high school Catholic education. One of them was Sister Mary Sean Hodges, who I know works now in detention ministry, but she was my principal at Santa Teresita. And she literally pushed me one day to take the mic and lead the school in morning prayer. And she re realized that I had a really tough time with confidence and just being able to speak publicly. And after that day, she had me do morning prayer every single day of my eighth grade uh, experience. So uh, she was also a marathoner. And I wonder if we've come full circle here 
uh, with me running the marathon the last two years, but she was fantastic and I had a great opportunity to see her recently. And then secondly was my high school English teacher, counselor and coach, Mark Johnson, who as it turns out is our school principal now. And so I get to work uh, side by side with my mentor here. Uh, he really paved the way for me to really look at schools beyond um, Los Angeles, to be quite honest. I followed in his footsteps and went to Georgetown University, and uh, he's always been a, a great role model uh, personally and professionally. And so um, I think from all of those different people, uh, what they all taught me was a great deal about service and, and really a feeling of uh, always giving back more than you take and somehow reinvesting in our communities because uh, ultimately, I think unfortunately, for better or for worse, people do leave our community and, and don't come back or sometimes forget about what's, what's truly happening here. Uh, there's a lot of poverty, there's, there, there are a lot of issues that we have in our community, but this idea of coming back and reinvesting, I think is, is something that I got from, from everybody there. And, and my hope is that someday when CEF is having coffee with CEF, 20 years from now that there would be students that would say the same about me. So I'm hopeful that I've had that kind of impact on students. I know a couple of them are here now that are also teachers at Stilesian. Uh, and so I, my hope is that someday there would be that, that feeling of, of paying it forward. And Karina, uh, why did you choose to be an educator in Catholic school? So like you mentioned, Katie, I, um, I've been in Catholic schools since I was in first grade. And I jokingly, I, I share that my first public, public school experience was when I went to UCLA, because I had been um, in Catholic schools my entire life. But I also grew up in the San Gabriel Valley and um, very sheltered. And I had a wonderful experience. I was taught by three different orders whose ministry um, and talents were in education. So I was taught by the Sisters of St. Louis um, in elementary school, the Benedictine sisters at St. Lucie's, and then the Jesuits when I was at LMU. And so through my experience growing up, high school, and then college, I was always taught um, to be a leader. I was always taught to um, recognize my voice and my voice as a woman, as a lay woman in our Catholic church. And I really was inspired by that. And, um, and also just my spiritual formation um, was formed throughout. So there wasn't a doubt uh, when I went to college that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and, but what I didn't realize is that there were inner city Catholic schools. Having grown up in, in the San Gabriel Valley, you know, we didn't hear about poor schools. We didn't, I didn't even know that they existed. And so that really intrigued me. Like, how is it that a Catholic school is poor? I didn't, I, I couldn't wrap my, my brain around it. And then um, I found out about Place Corps. Uh, and they were just starting Place Corps. It was a new program. And my now, um, my mentor who just passed away recently, Pam Rector, she said to me, you should look into this program. I think you'd be great. And then I was placed at St. Teresa School, which is on Central and 16th. And I stayed there for four years. And then I knew what it meant to be in an inner city because we were working with a population that needed a lot of support. And um, I actually went back to St. Louis of France to teach um, after I was at, at St. Uh, Terribius. I was a third grade teacher, which was really interesting to um, go back as a teacher when you had been a student. Um, but I had a great time, but I, I felt this calling to go back to the inner city, to go back to where I felt um, uh, people or students needed more support. Um, so yeah, so my entire experience has been in Catholic schools and, and what I appreciate that is that we're able to talk about God, that we're able to um, really really bring in our spirituality. Um, and, and I think that is a big determining factor in the impact that we make for our families and our students. Boyle Heights is known to be a low income area with unique challenges. So how are you responding to the needs of your students and families? Karina, I'm gonna start with you for this one. Absolutely. So, you know, we, when um, on March 13th, when we were told that we had to shut down school, we, we were hoping that that wasn't the case because we know that Dolores Mission School, for so many of our kids, this is a place of consistency, of safety, um, where adults, are going to be here, we're going to show up, where they're going to have a hot meal. And so we were very scared about 
um, the realities that our kids were going to face if they weren't going to be here at Dolores Mission. Um, one of the first things that we did was we created a COVID fund because immediately um, ha uh, many of our parents lost their jobs. And so the uncertainty of rent, of food, of um, basic household supplies, that came to light early on. And so we created a COVID response um, fund and we were able to generate a couple of thousands of dollars and be able to provide um, $100 gift cards to our families. And, and also we were able to secure lotions and um, shampoo, just basic necessities for families to survive. Um, but then I'm so proud of, of our team um, with the direction of, of Ms. Hara, our principal and the teachers, because in two days, they transformed what learning was going to look like. They started to plan, they started to um, create lessons, make packets, uh, talk about how they were going to be able to deliver education to our kids. And it's been remarkable, it's been phenomenal. I'm so proud of the work that they're doing because um, I can say as a parent too, that our kids are learning. And with the programs that we've been using, um, through the support of the Catholic Schools Collaborative, our learning just continued. And so, you know, there's, there's the um, just basic um, need, there's the educational support, but then there's also psychological um, and behavioral support that we're offering. So our parents and students have access to art therapy, um, um, counseling services, even parent uh, therapy is still being provided to our parents via Zoom. So I think we're doing the best that we can um, to make sure that our kids, given this new reality, kind of maintain some normalcy. Um, we, have, we, ha we also, because of this, we have seen some families, some kids have been taken to family members in Bakersfield or out of, you know, it's really, it's really sad because families can't take care of their own kids. Um, and so we're, we're saving their spot. We're making sure that they know that we're still here. And when this is all done, you know, they'll, they'll come back and they'll, they'll be with us again. So that's what, um, in a nutshell, what Dolores Mission has been doing. Thank you. And so Alex, um, what's going on at Salesian? How are you responding to the needs? You no, know, uh, the, what's interesting is that the stress of financial uncertainty and the safety of our students is not something that's new to our school or many of your schools. Uh, Every day there's a challenge here. Obviously nothing ever this big, uh, but still challenges that we have to deal with, you know? And so we're very fortunate as I think a lot of our schools are that we are a resilient school and we know that things will be okay uh, because we don't shy away from challenges. Um, so in a way, I think we were somehow better prepared to tackle some of the financial issues because we have been historically in constant communication with families that are going through some difficult times. Uh, but it's still very tough though. And I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, our families are the first to lose jobs when there's a countrywide, when there is countrywide financial distress. Um, unfortunately, we do have some families that it's sometimes very difficult for them to come out and say, I need help. And so we, we have to personalize that experience for all of our families. We're a school of 400. And so we are, for example, today, we have staff members making calls to every single family just to do a wellness check. How's everything? Is everything okay? How's your son? Is he doing his work? You know, and, and we're discovering quite a bit. You know, um, I mentioned in the article that CEF uh, published a few weeks ago that Oftentimes the school is the nicest place for a lot of our boys and the, the place with the most structure. And so suddenly breaking that up, especially during high school years when so many things can go wrong is, is such a, a difficult uh, issue. And so we've managed to create uh, some structures, put some structures in place for the students. But I think Arina's right in just really trying to figure out what's going on at home and how can we best help. And so we do make those calls We've been getting feedback from parents. If we can't handle something in-house, we will try our very best to have uh, some connection with an outside organization. Uh, I know the Cardinal McIntyre Fund uh, is certainly available there for, for families. But there, there are so many people willing to help. Uh, and sometimes it's just making that connection between our resources, outside resources, and then our families. 
so I, I'm very confident that there are avenues for each of our schools to be able to assist in some way that oftentimes it's just that call that makes a huge difference in just trying to check in with, with some of our families and our students. Thanks, Alex. Um, so we're now about a month into the new normal with distance learning. Can you describe some of the more innovative ways your teachers and administrators are engage, engaging students? And Alex, I would invite you to ask um, Nathan and Hector to respond to this question as well. Alex, would you like to begin? Yeah, uh, so we were very fortunate to get a head start with distance learning and technology. We launched a one-on-one -on -one device program four years ago, and that included internet access for all of our students. Um, and Google uh, Apps for Education, uh, opportunities for the students to collaborate with teachers. And so while we were still seeing students on a daily basis, uh, we did have that opportunity to then launch into remote learning a little easier. We experimented this fall actually with a couple of classes, and I think Nathan might have been in this class, uh, in which the teacher dismissed the students and then the students were able to go basically home, coffee shops, the park, wherever, but they had to connect. And at, we found that the students, once they were shown that we would trust them in not being within the walls of our classroom, that they really rose to the challenge. And so I'm really proud that our community, once we were able to launch this effort, which by the way, took like three days, you know, from the time that we found out schools were closing to the school is closed. I'm proud that our community was able to rise to the challenge and work together to make the most of, out of what we've been uh, given. Um, and maybe if I could have Hector and Nathan share a little bit about their experience and just how this has really, um, you know, affected them, but just some of the cool things that have happened in their classes. Uh, they're really the stars of the show, so I'll, I'll hand it off to them. So maybe uh, Nathan, we'll start with you. Um, I think that like Mr. Jacon was saying, having the one-to-one -one iPad program really made the transition a lot, a lot smoother. Um, just because like you said, it was from like over the weekend that we found out we were switching to online classes. And a lot of the teachers had already um, been using uh, Google apps such as Google Classroom, uh, some uh, like Edpuzzle to assign work online. But just uh, a big difference has been um, like just the lectures. And as far as like in one on one with the teacher, a lot of the teachers are still offering um, office hours in which we can go and ask any questions that we have so that's really been helpful and then uh i'm a senior so over the last uh, month or so i've been having i had to make the choice of where i'm going to school and i think our counselor has done a great job of being able uh being accessible uh so i can ask any questions that i had where are you going nathan next year uh uc santa barbara all right awesome and Hector, maybe share a little bit about your experience. Uh, yeah, so like Nathan was uh, saying, uh, technology, you know, the iPad one-on-one -on -one program uh, is really what kind of, you know, uh, impulsed us to, uh, to, to be successful in this transition. I feel like if we didn't have that, it probably would have been hard. I mean, I know like some public schools started, you know, school just two weeks ago, a couple of days ago, but us, we had like that kind of uh, kickstart that we had already been through this before. And um, like Nathan said, the teachers are very accessible. I can still talk to my counselors. I can, you know, still ask questions during class. It's a very uh, interactive and fun class because you could be in a lecture and then you could be doing group work and then you could be doing your own work and then you still have homework. So it's, it's like a balanced schedule to what we used to have. So that way we're not very, uh, it's not very hard to go from, school to homeschool now so it's 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 a very accessible schedule that we have which is what i really enjoy and just so everybody knows we run a synchronous uh, schedule so all of the students right now are not missing classes because this is our prep time for teachers um, we have uh, basically a three-hour block on wednesdays and friday mornings for students to check in with teachers club members to meet, uh, but every class meets once a week for three hours. And so on Monday, they have two classes, Tuesdays, they have two classes and so on and so forth. Uh, and so I think the students are, are taking advantage of those opportunities to engage with their teachers. And the teachers have been great, very accessible, 
Uh, and obviously, I, I think this is the case at every school. We're not perfect and we're, and we're not expecting perfection. Uh, I appreciate just people being able to roll with the punches uh, and realizing that there are new things, new technologies that are out there, but we don't have to use all of them. You know, use what, what really is comfortable. Oftentimes, even asking students for help, you know, is, is great. A student taught me how to use Zoom uh, a little bit better. And so that, that's been really helpful. Uh, we're in this together and why not take advantage of that opportunity to engage with students and really utilizing some of what works, uh, you know, with them. Thanks, Alex. Karina, um, what's going on at Dolores Mission? How are your teachers engaging students? Well, our teachers are doing an incredible job. And again, I have to commend our principal and our, our, our team because from TK through eighth grade, um, teachers are creating videos, posting them on different platforms. I know TK through second use Class Dojo. Um, my daughter, as a first grader, has morning meetings every morning. Uh, and there's, there's a, a loose schedule that we also have to follow. And third through eighth grade, it's the same thing. Um, we also became a one-to-one -one school about two and a half years ago. And we adopted many online programs, again, with our um, partnership with the Catholic Schools Collaborative. So we implemented Achieve 3000. I want to say now, this would be our second year. And Achieve 3000 is a comprehensive program um, specifically used in English language arts, social studies, uh, and science. We also had STEM scopes, um, Eureka Math, um, and then other supplemental English language arts programs like um, Actively Learn and Smarty Ants. So for third through eighth grade, since they were already using all of these online platforms, it was very easy just to continue and move on. And actually, our scores in English language arts have increased exponentially. And um, it, it, the, the, um, the data coach that we were working with, the Catholic Schools Collaborative, actually was surprised at how much growth had happened. Um, but there was sort of, I think, this um, because kids weren't in, in a classroom, there wasn't peer pressure or, you know, like the normal um, distractions of everyday class learning kids are really able to focus and learn. It's, it's been, yesterday I got an email that our third grade class had, had achieved the most gains out of, out of um, whoever was using um, uh, Achieve 3000, which was, incre it's incredible. So we're really proud to know that even though our kids aren't here, that our parents and students and teachers are still working really hard to make sure that they have access to a quality education. And so, we're really proud of them um, that they're just continuing, that even though we're the poorest school, um, we're still doing our work, we're still doing our job, and we're still trying to provide support to our families. Thank you, Karina. Now, so I know we're all hoping to get back to the classroom soon. So how do you think this experience with distance learning is gonna change the teaching structure and practices in the future? Karina, I'll start with you for this one. It, absolutely. This, this has completely, this will change, I think, learning and how we treat education. And when I was um, speaking to Ms. Hara yesterday, you know, she mentioned, you know, we're still working on a model that was created in the 1800s. You know, this from the industrial movement where you have a group of kids, they just listen to the teacher, the teacher puts all this input in their brain, and then they're expected to go out and then use it into the world. And this has, I think, just prompted teachers to be creative, to reach out to the kids that maybe they didn't, they didn't reach out to normally in an everyday classroom, to really engage in critical thinking. Um, and I think right now what, what administrators, what teachers, what all of us have to take inventory is what are we doing that's going well? What is, what is working? And uh, really, rethinking when we go back into the classroom, this will forever change. We can't go back to how we did things before. And the other, the other piece is um, the use of technology. Because a lot of times I think that um, you, you give somebody an iPad and they replace it with the pen and paper or the book. And that's not really integrating technology effectively or comprehensively. And so I think now uh, with iPads or Chromebooks and the different platforms that we're using, we're giving students an opportunity to, um, 
to show their their learning and to be creative and apply um, uh, apply what they're learning in different ways. So I think that this is just uh, this is pushing us um, out of a box that we've been in for over a hundred hundred years. And so I think it's it's really exciting. Um, it's really exciting, and it would be remiss for us not to change and learn from from this time. Alex. Um... How do you how do you think uh, education is going to change as a result of? Yeah, I I agree with Karina. I think if we after all of this is done, which which it will be done at some point, if we go back to business as usual, we will have missed a significant opportunity to really take a step back to reexamine our work. I'm sure this is the case with a lot of uh, the schools of folks that are on this call. Uh, but we've discovered that there are some students that are thriving in this environment that we're really struggling in our antiquated educational system. Uh, and so to really explore what, is it, what does it mean to be a successful student? How can we be great teachers? Um, and while technology is one form of innovation, it's not the only form of innovation. Giving a kid an iPad is one thing, but really transforming education involves much more than, than technology. Uh, the real struggle, though, I have to be honest, is we, we really pride ourselves at Salesian of, of making sure that our boys know that they are loved. And this is really tough for us to do over a Zoom meeting or through phone calls. Uh, seeing another person, giving them a hug, uh, those are ways that we show that our students are loved. It's one thing, as St. John Bosco would say, to tell the boys that they are loved, but um, it's another to actually show them that they are loved. And so... I think it really exploring how do we personalize this even further to make sure that our students recognize their value and that they are valued as members of our school communities. Um, at our individual schools, quite honestly, I mentioned this before, I think the ability to make decisions without and implementing them without substantial bureaucracy, to be quite honest, has helped tremendously. I did not have to wait for the archdiocese to tell me, yeah, go ahead with this instructional method or that one. We jumped into action in two to three days and we, we've made it work and work well. And that's something that I think everybody needs to give themselves a big pat on the back for. Uh, but now the real work starts, right? We have about seven more weeks before the end of the school year if, if we were to stay closed. And so um, this will get old very quickly if we don't continue to look at ways of keeping it fresh. Both of you as... Um... As parents, you have another perspective into distance learning. Alex, you've got a son at Salesian and another at St. Ignatius Elementary. And Karina, your daughter is at Dolores Mission and you've got a little one as well. So how's it going with uh, your family and their experiences with virtual school? What a nightmare. I mean, what a dream it is uh, to, to be with my boys uh, at home. Um, we have quite the operation going on at home. We turned our dining room table into a central family workstation. My wife uh, basically shifted her office uh, from her office space to our home. Um, my son, my high schooler, is right next to her. So he, she's constantly looking over his shoulder. And then my little one is running all over the place. Uh, so we told him that's his workstation. But he's, you know, uh, some of you with kids, little kids would know. Uh, I'm the president at Salesian, but my wife is the president at our household. So we take our orders from her. She tells us when it's time to do things and we sort of try not to get in trouble there, but she's been doing a fantastic job. I unfortunately have, have not been much of a contributor uh, lately, uh, but it has been uh, really interesting to just see how we were able to sort of figure things out. Uh, replenishment of our fridge is a constant. Um, and so that's, that's been a, an interesting uh, thing for us. Uh, it has been challenging and sometimes difficult. Um, I think the biggest difficulty, quite honestly, is not academic. Um, I think uh, teachers everywhere are always playing catch up. You know, we, we, we know how to catch up. We know how to pick and choose what are the most important aspects of the student's educational journey. And if it isn't covered, you, we know that eventually we will be okay, that things will be covered. My concern though, and I've just seen this through both of my sons and personally, quite honestly, is, is the mental health of all of our students 
who are not experiencing that human aspect. Uh, I honestly don't remember anything academically from my elementary, high school, or quite honestly, college days. But I do remember the friendships I formed and the experiences that I had with friends um, and the accomplishments and disappointments that were associated with some of those very personal things. I remember all of that. And that's honestly what kept me sane. And so I will try to build those things with my sons at home and uh, hopefully they think it's still cool to talk to their parents. And if they don't, they're forced to because we're living under the same roof. Um, and while the purchase of a trampoline and a punching bag and a few board games has helped, really the, the conversations uh, with my boys, even if it's about something so random, has been uh, phenomenal. And so I've been able to sort of see, you know, that, that they'll be okay, but it is a, it is a concern. Just the longer that this drags on, how they'll be able to cope with some of the issues that come from not being able to engage with people their age on a personal level, getting into trouble even, you know, uh, with some of their friends. I think some of those lessons um, will be tough to, to mimic uh, at home. Karina, how's it going in the uh, Corgan household? <laughs> it's going. <laughs> so my kids are, are younger. I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. So I think they're, they're actually just happy that we're all home together. You know, they're, they're super excited. Um, I've seen a lot of de um, developmental growth with my three-year-old, which has been great. He's been speaking more. Um, he's potty trained, which is awesome. Um, and, and I'm also just grateful that my daughter's able to learn and, and still able to connect with her friends on Class Dojo. Um, for us, I think um, just being um, forgiving with myself as a parent, just knowing that I'm not going to be able to do everything that I did at work. I'm not going to be able to be the best teacher for my daughter. I was joking with our coworker, Lucio. Um, Right now, I think every parent who has kids in TK through second grade, we're the aid, you know, because we're helping our kids um, based on, on, on their direction. Um, and so I think for the little ones, it's a little harder because you have to still provide a lot of support, a lot of direction, a lot of instruction. I think the older ones, it's, it's easier because they can log on to the platforms themselves and um, do things on their own. But I think, you know, this time has also been really special for us as a family. Um, watching Mass on Sunday through Dolores Mission live stream has been great. Um, my kids call it Amen. So I'm like, okay, it's Amen time. <laughs> so we're, you know, we're together in, in our room and it's, it's been, I have, I have to, I make a choice to look at the positives and I make a choice to look at the blessings. And I'm blessed that I still have a job. Um, I'm blessed that my family's safe. I'm blessed that we have everything that we need. We, we're not without. Um, and I think, but I also think about our families who are single parents, you know, who have maybe four or five kids and how daunting this might be. And I think, I think I, what I, what I want to tell parents is just be easy on yourself. You know, none of us can figure it out. None of us can be perfect in this moment. Um, and, uh, I was talking to Lucio last night and he said, you know, what really helps us navigate this process is that we're still grounded in our faith. And I think he, when he said that, I said, yeah, you're right. You know, that, that we hold on to our spirituality, that we hold on to our faith. Um, all these lessons that we've learned since we were kids, just knowing that God is with us and that we'll, we'll make it out in the end. So it's going, it's crazy. Um, the first day of the quarantine, my, my toddler flushed three toothbrushes down the toilet. And so it was clogged. <laughs> but I, you got to laugh and carry on. So we're, we're doing our best. Oh, God bless you, both of you, for what you do at school and at home. <laughs> um, so we've got a lot of people here that, you know, that really care about Catholic school. That's why they're here, because they care about Catholic schools, they care about Catholic education, and they care about the students that you serve and that we serve together through the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, the Catholic Education Foundation, our individual schools. So I wanted to ask you, you touched on this a little bit, but what do you or your students or if your families need right now? What is it, what are your most immediate needs? And 
Alex, would you like to start? Well, I won't beat around the bush. We always need money. Uh, our budget was not built for this and certainly not for the long term. I may decide to jump in the coffee mug business. Apparently that's a lucrative uh, business there, Mr. Page. Um, we also have a COVID-19 uh, fund and that specifically is for any families that have been affected personally um, by the situation, either loss of job, um, loss of life, you know, what, whatever issue may come up as a result of that, we wanna direct funds to that. Uh, we've been soliciting our alumni for that through various methods, social media, uh, over the phone and emails and we've been we've been slowly getting some money in what's tough is you know everybody's affected by this and so it's really difficult to raise money right now uh, but i'm confident that we'll be able to find uh that kind of support to really make sure and we, we will we will make it work you know we we are really trying to work our 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 magic and trying to make sure we don't lose any families as a result of this. And so we will find a way, but uh, that's certainly a big struggle for us. Um, finally, I think prayers. You know, I, I made a commitment to continue to run our daily mass in the morning. So I live stream that for Father Jim. We're fortunate to have two priests on campus uh, every morning uh, that are so, so willing to have daily mass at 7.45 a.m. Uh, through YouTube, if any of you are interested. Uh, but pray with us, you know, pray for us. This is a tough time. And as I said before, I do have hope that this will end soon. Uh, but we really appreciate everybody thinking about us and praying for us during uh, these challenging times. So feel free to uh, join us uh, in any of those ways. Um, and certainly give us a call, check in. You know, we love hearing people uh, all the time. The, the, the school is very lonely, as I'm sure those of you that are still going in time to time. Uh, school isn't school without the students and the parents. And so that's um, certainly great to have these opportunities to engage with students and our families uh, consistently. And if that's through mass or through some other way, um, we're all for it. Thanks, Alex. Karina, what do you or your families or your students need right now? Um, so there's a couple, couple of different ways that um, folks can support Dolores Mission School. One, we also have a COVID relief 19 fund. So if that's something specific that you wanna support families, again, just providing um, basic needs, gift cards, um, diapers, that sort of thing, there's a specific fund that you can give to that. Um, the other thing that I would continue to encourage is 75% um, of my families earn less than 24,000. So really the way that we're able to support our families is through the Adopt-A-Student program. So if you are interested in giving to adopt, that goes directly to student scholarship. Again, our kids are learning, they're thriving, they're doing great. And so we're so proud of them that they're still resilient, even you know, given this um, tumultuous time. So if you're interested in giving to adopt, you could do a monthly gift, a recurring gift, you could give a one-time donation, anything from $5 to $5,000, whatever you can afford or, or have in your heart to give, that would be an incredible support. And the other thing I forgot to mention too, is that our, um, we have a homeless shelter that operates out of our church. It's called the Guadalupe Homeless Project, and it's run by our sister nonprofit. Um, and now the shelter has become a 24-hour shelter, and they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in our school cafeteria. Um, they've also had some health concerns with uh, folks. And so some places in our school have served as quarantine spaces. So we've set up spaces for the men um, to be able to be, be in isolation for 14 days, but they are also in need of, of food um, to be able to feed um, the men. Before it was, um, they would have breakfast and dinner in our school cafeteria and they would leave um, and then come back. But now they're here, which has actually, again, been great for our school because there's, and our church, because there's community here. And so even though our students are not here, the men and the women in the, sh in the homeless shelter are still part of our family and they're still using our school building. So that brings me a lot of, a lot of comfort. So if you um, know of folks um, that have, um, you know, access to lots of beans and rice, they need a lot of those things. Um, 
So that would be a, a, of great support to our community as well. Thank you, Karina. I'm going to share my screen really briefly. Um, so if you want to learn more about Dolores Mission or um, Salesian High School, you can visit their websites there. And right now, um, I have a few questions. First of all, I have a question for uh, Nancy. Um, can you tell us about some of the schools that were provided the resources, like free, like who has, who's running the free lunch program and the um, iPads that you spoke sure. about earlier? Sure. So we have um, food being provided at Grab and Go at 40 of our schools, at 40 of our um, elementary schools. I'm more than happy to share an exact list with you, but they're in all three regions. And um, know that the, the, the schools provide um, and the parishes provide the food. It's a breakfast and lunch and um, milk and juice and things like that. Um, across all of our regions and you can be uh, anyone in the community. You don't have to be a student um, specifically of the school. Um, and so there are just community members just lining up and um, it's a great thing that's really happening. It's, 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 a, it's a real thing that's happening as we see our numbers increasing every single week. So 40 sites and I'm happy to share the list with you and you can share that out as well. The, the, the iPads and um, we're working very closely with uh, C3 Ignite. Um, at the Archdiocese and we're working closely. Just recently, actually, we provided um, the distance learning team in elementary schools and high schools. We worked really closely to create a survey that went out to all of our schools just to see um, things like connectivity um, and staying in contact with families and who has access to iPads, who has access to internet. So we're in the process of analyzing all of that data. Um, the really good news, immediate good news is it looks like about 90, uh, 93 or 94 Five percent of our schools actually responded. So I think it's a, a little over 190 of our elementary schools, maybe 195, and all of our Catholic high schools have responded. So we're able to see that um, um, over 90% of our schools right now, I think the number is 92% of our schools right now have been in contact with 100% of their families in some way, shape, or form. We're in regular contact. I think about, you know, the LA Times and how different school districts, you know, they're really struggling right now to, um, connect with, with, with families and kids in the community. So one of the really um, positive things uh, that Karina and um, Alex both mentioned is, is that we are this community. We're a community of love. Um, and we're staying connected to these kids to, to um, educate them, but just to be with them as a whole child and just hold them close. So that's good news. So through the survey data, what we're doing is if we're seeing opportunities for um, more engagement, whether it's providing devices or why is it that, you know, um, I have, you know, 120 schools, 130 schools that have contacted 100% of their families or their kids are regularly logging in or getting their packets. Um, why is it that maybe just these dozen schools, what's going on with those 20 families? So we're really in this really place where we've gathered enough qualitative and quantitative data so we can maybe work with the assistant superintendents and say, let's really focus on these 10 schools or these 12 schools. Where are those families and how can we support them? So um, more info to come, but we're doing the best that we absolutely can as a community. I do want to thank Karina again and Alex for the amazing things. They shared some distance learning data and um, and I'm just hearing some great things through our different partnerships like the collaborative um, that are just going on um, in terms of being able to connect with families, go online, um, provide packets. All of this happened within the archdiocese um, from two days, we're hearing to four days to a week. So, so that's also a very important, um, I think, data point as we continue to connect with families for seven weeks, Alex, as you said, or longer, and keep it fun and keep it engaging, right? keep it fresh. <laughs> Nancy, um, I have a question now. We've received a question for Alex and Nathan and Hector, if you'd like to chime in. Um, so what is the plan for the traditional milestones of high school right now, including prom, graduation, etc.? Good question. It's, uh, it's so challenging to you know, look into the future and, and try to prepare for the unknown. And so we're looking at it from two perspectives. We almost have to double plan in the possibility, which to be quite honestly, might not necessarily be a possibility that we return on, you know, May 15th or so, we would try to maintain some social distancing uh, 
at some of our major events that are crucial, you know, graduation, baccalaureate mass, all those different things. But quite honestly, we have to prepare for the possibility that we're not coming back until the fall. And so that could look like, uh, for lack of a better phrase, we'll come up with a better phrase, a drive-through graduation, you know, where only those people that are living within the confines of a specific household show up, they get celebrated on the stage, uh, we maintain those social di distancing pieces so they don't necessarily get the handshake from the president or principal, but we create that moment for our students. I, I really, and this, you know, I may be criticized for this, I think if we wait too long, we will lose a lot of our students once college starts. They, they will not come back. Or for you, those of you in elementary schools, they will have a new set of friends and they'll decide, you know what, that's so last year. And so then they, they, they will not want to participate in our event. So I, I think there needs to be some closure for our families um, in, in the 12th grade. Um, this is such a unique situation, but I was telling uh, some of our students, Salesian isn't the only one that's dealing with this. We're, we're all having to deal with this. And I think the best thing to do is for all of our schools to really share these kinds of ideas and pick and choose how you can make it special for your specific uh, location. Uh, masses are a little bit, I mean, I don't want to say easier, but we, we do have some live stream capability here. And so uh, families have been joining us for those already. And so if we were going to have a live stream mass or live stream event where we give awards, that can certainly work. But the actual graduation on campus, being with your friends, we'll have to take a look at that and be very creative. Um, you know, maybe we'll we'll have it going on as we have a massive screen where people can watch it from a parking lot, you know, uh, in the comfort of their own vehicles. I mean, we, we just have to think outside the box when it comes to uh, these these types of issues. Nathan or Hector, do you have anything to add? I know um, every Sunday, every Sunday, the the school community has been gathering and it's a it's like a senior class meeting where all the teachers, um, faculty uh, join and They've, they allow for us to have any questions. Uh, they allow us to ask questions um, about all the events that will, were supposed to normally happen, but they've informed us that um, they're gonna try to do everything. They're gonna try to make everything possible for us um, as far as like graduation and our baccalaureate class. Uh, yeah, and uh, as for me, I mean, I'm a junior right now, so I don't really, uh, you know, fall on the circumstance, but, uh, I we had a meeting like two weeks ago where we were basically treated as seniors already, but just uh, you know all of us uh, making sure that we're together for our brothers because like we said you know we're all in this together and if it was me that was being taken away from the opportunity of having a graduation or going to prom that would really upset me so I just you know I'm I'm here to help my 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 brothers ultimately to you know not be I guess sad upset and just just you know all together i know there's mass every day at 7 45 a.m with father jim so we just we we all go on the facebook live and then we watch it and, and it feels like like we're all together like like uh we're, we're 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 home thanks guys i really appreciate that i got a question uh, this is another question for nancy um for parents who um require additional support um but um, are unable to reach someone in their Catholic school who can support them. Do you have a recommendation of who they could, who they should contact? Yes, um, great question. So first, I just wanted to just kind of um, add one little tidbit uh, for Hector and Nathan um, and for everyone here. In terms of celebratory um, events or just um, activities or just, you know, you think about kindergarten, you know, culmination, you think about you think about eighth grade to ninth grade, um, that experience, you think about high schools. I just wanted you guys to know that um, that our distance learning teams in elementary school and high schools are meeting this week um, and they have very specific topics such as transcripts, such as um, you know, a, a profile page, such as what does a graduation look 
looks like. And then from there, our elementary school leadership council and our high school leadership councils are taking that information this week because we'd have, we've had a number of schools reach out and just ask for guidance, not a mandate, just what are some ideas? So we've been gathering research from various archdioceses, from higher ed, from school districts, got all of that information together. And we're, we're gonna we're gonna create some sort of um, guidance, just here are some ideas, here are some practices across the nation in our state that we're gonna be sharing out with our schools very soon. But I would love if Nathan and Hector, if you guys had some fantastic ideas and you wanna tell Mr. Chacon, like, tell this to Mrs. Portillo, like this is a great idea for seniors, or this is a great idea for juniors, or Karina, if you have some students too, this would just be great just to have that that student voice as well. I think our leaders are doing a great job in capturing the family voice. You know, they're serving our families. But I'm so curious that I hear Nathan and Hector like, this would be great. This would be neat. So, so Alex, if they, the boys have any sort of ideas or Karina, it would be great just if you want to share that up. Um, Katie, so if you have families and, and we know just looking at um, our, our nation and what's going on today, if there are families that are unable for whatever reason um, to contact um, the, the the principal or or the business person at the school site if there is a business person i'm sure every school has their own structure of who you reach out to i know principals um, um are available and people are answering phones but i do recommend that you do reach out to the department of catholic schools immediately please know that our entire office is remote and distance our lines are all open um, our assistant superintendents are answering phones and i mean best or worst case scenario my favorite my favorite parts of my day are when I get to talk to parents and students and teachers and <laughs> principals. So, I mean, have them have them email me or contact me too. But our office lines are open. I see our faces of our wonderful administrative staff here. They're logging calls or catching phone numbers. They're taking messages and we're checking that on a very regular basis. So we're all here to support families to make sure that they continue to receive this wonderful gift of a Catholic education, especially in a time like this. Uh, Katie, one, one just quick note uh, to add about the graduation stuff is uh, something that we did is we asked for volunteers from the senior class for, for parents. Uh, how many parents would like to be on the uh, committee to help plan this effort? And that um, we started to receive some uh, volunteers for that. So I think it's good to not work in this bubble. I mean, this is an event that all of us will enjoy and will plan together. And I think that would be a really positive thing that schools could do is just to engage more parents in that planning process. Thank you. I know we are running very, very low on time and we do have a lot of questions and I apologize if we're not getting to everybody, but I do encourage, like Nancy said, if you have an issue um, that's of a personal nature, you have a specific need to reach out to your principal or the administrator of your school and cannot reach your principal to contact the Department of Catholic Schools. So, and if you're, and if you're looking device, for devices, my advice would be to first contact your school principal or administrator and see what they have um, available to you um, and what, what kind of resources that they can offer your, um, your child um, so that they can be successful. Oh, I do have a very a special message from Jerry Wendell from Art Trek, who is joining us again today. Thank you, Jerry, for coming. Last week, three more schools were added to the um, list of schools receiving Art Trek with the little art lessons online. If you are a Catholic school administrator for elementary school and you would like to be to receive the little art lessons from Art Trek please email info at arttrek.org, I-N-F-O at A-R-T-T-R-E-K dot org. And next week, um, you know, I know Nancy talked about this a little bit, so it was, it's a great segue into who is going to be joining us next week. We are going to have the pastor and principal of St. Gertrude the Great. And that is one of the school sites that is distributing uh, free breakfast and lunch every day and also that parish is a food bank operated by St. Vincent de Paul so they're going to be talking about how they're reaching the community um, and not only for academic but also the basic needs of their students and as always I want to thank all of you for your support especially during this time the school closures don't necessarily mean that class is canceled but 
they do, but it does mean that um, a lot of schools have had to cancel their fu parent fundraising programs, their regular fundraising programs, events, galas, golf tournaments, all sorts of things. And many families are out of work and facing extreme hardship. So if you can give right now, please visit our website. It's cefdn.org. 100% of your donations to the Catholic Education Foundation will support the tuitions, tuition awards program. And those are tuition awards for the most um, disadvantaged students in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles to attend Catholic schools. Also on our website, we have a link for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles's COVID-19 fund, which supports schools and parishes in need. So in addition to the COVID-19 funds that were set up by Dolores Mission and Salesian High School individually for their communities, there is a larger COVID-19 fund that is dispersed to those in need um, throughout the Archdiocese. We hope that we will see you again next week. And if you have any questions in advance, you can email me and let me know in advance and I'll have those questions ready for our guests. So thank you all for coming. And it was wonderful to see all of you. We hope your family is are safe and healthy and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.